For this Arduino project, we are using a 1.3 inch OLED that we picked up online. We'll put a link in the description below where you can pick one up. We also have an Arduino. In our case, we're using the Adafruit Metro, which is compatible with the Arduino. It specifically has dedicated pins for the I2C communication, which we'll detail shortly. We're also incorporating a potentiometer. Here's the wiring diagram. Now here's a picture of the Adafruit Metro. You can see the data and clock pins that are dedicated. If you're using the Uno or the Nano, you can use the, wire, uh, the pins that we showed in the wiring diagram. If you're using some other variation like the Mega 2560 or something else, you'll have to look up the specifications for your board to see which pins are specified for SDA and SCL. Here's the Metro wired up. You can see that we've wired up the pins for data and clock. And we're also using one analog pin to get data back from the potentiometer. Here's the OLED. If you look closely, you can see connections for power ground, clock, and data pins. And we've also put the potentiometer on a little breadboard. All right, now that we've got the project wired up, let's program it. To program it, we're gonna need the Arduino IDE. If you never used it before, it's open source and free. You can get it at arduino.cc. Just follow the software downloads page. It works for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I've used it on all three and haven't had any problems. This tutorial is done on Windows. Now once you have that installed, go ahead and open it. All right, now that we have the IDE installed, there's a few things we need to do to configure it. So you need to choose the correct board. Now we're using the Arduino Uno. We are using the Adafruit Metro, which is compatible with Arduino Uno. That's why we chose this one right here. You also have to choose the COM port. Now this can be tricky depending on how many devices you got plugged into your machine. So let me show you how on Windows to find which COM port to choose. You can type in device manager. Then open up ports. You can see right here that our Arduino is plugged into COM4. That's why we chose that one. So now that we have the board and port selected, we need to install the open source library, the UHG2 library. So we'll go to tools, manage libraries. And this library manager will show all the libraries that can be installed or have been installed. So type UHG2 in this text field. This will bring up UHG2 by Oliver. As you can see on our machine it is already installed. What you would do is you would select the latest version, click install, and then click close. So once you've installed the library, we're going to go ahead and use an example from the library. So go to File, Examples. Now down at the bottom, you should see the UAG2 example uh, menu item here. So go ahead and choose Full Buffer UAG2 Logo. With an example, now Oli Cross, I believe that's his name, the one who um, created this um, open source library gave us a list of constructors to choose from. Now there are lots of them as you can see here and the name of each one will give us a clue as to what, uh, which one we need to use. Now based on the description of the item of the um, OLED that we're using we can narrow it down to the chipset which is 1106 and also we are it has a resolution or um, size of 128 by 64. Now we are also using the I2C protocol and this is the only one with this chipset, the 1106 chipset that's using this protocol. So this is the one that we'll use right here. So I'll uncomment that and we'll go ahead and just get rid of the other constructors here that are commented out because we don't need them and it'll just take up some space. Quick. 
seen there are a lot of them here. Let's take a quick peek at the code here. Now we know it's going to print out a logo. So as we can see here in this loop, they're going to clear the buffer, draw the logo in the URL. Write the buffer and then wait a second before they do it again. So let's go ahead and save this. Save it to, uh, yeah, we'll just call this G2 logo test. This should be fine. Go ahead and save it. And we're going to hit this upload button right here. And this will upload our code to the Arduino. And it could take a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. All right, if everything works out, you should see the logo and the URL on your screen. This is what it looks like. Now, it doesn't do much. It doesn't flash or scroll or anything like that, but this is a good start. If you, if everything looks good, then we can go ahead and uh, have some more fun with this. So let's go back and look at the reference for the this open source library. I'll put a link in the description box. It's got uh, a lot of functions in here that we can use to have a little bit of fun see him here I thought what we would do is begin by just drawing a circle and then we can do some things with it but let's go ahead and look at this method so what it requires is looks like a an x-axis y radius and then an option to draw just a part of the circle or all of it here's an example right here we're gonna have x-axis is 20, y at 25, the radius is 10, and then this says to draw the entire circle. So let's go back to the IDE and start to uh, code this. Let me just copy this right here. So we're going to put our code in this loop here. Now you can see that they're using, this example uses a clear buffer and send buffer, which basically wipes off the entire display and then puts it back on but I was looking at the documentation and there's another way to do this that doesn't use up so much RAM and we're going to um, look at this method called first page and next page here we go uh, this command is part of the picture loop which renders the contents of the display it must be used with next page so the advantage is lesser RAM consumption compared to a full frame buffer in RAM. So you can see here they're in the loop they're going to call this first page. They're going to do all the graphics and then we'll call next page. So we'll go ahead and use this um, in our loop. First let's go ahead and create our draw circle method. We'll just create it right here. Call Call it draw circ, and then we'll give it two parameters: an x-axis and a y-axis. Go ahead and paste the buffer here. So this value right here is the x-axis. We'll use the parameter. This one is the y. Go ahead and use the parameter. We'll keep the radius at 10. That's fine, and then we'll draw. The entire circle. Now let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and first we'll comment out these lines here. Keep the delay, that's fine. Let's go back to the documentation and just copy this right into our IDE. And we'll save this, these calls to draw string later. That's what I want to do right now. Here's this call to draw that circle. So draw circ and give it value 20, 25, that's fine. That's all we need for that one. 
and then we'll go ahead and save and upload. All right, if everything works out, you should see a circle drawn on the display. Now it doesn't do much, but it, it shows us that we are able to go ahead and choose methods or functions from the open source library and use them. So let's go ahead and soup this up a little bit. I was looking at the Arduino library, what's available, and I noticed here that there is a random function. So why don't we go ahead and use random numbers to decide where we want to display our circle. Why don't we go ahead and use random numbers to pick the x and y axis when we display our circle. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this is used. You can see here that you can set up the call a random seed and we'll just read from analog read zero. I think that They call random seed analog read zero. Let's see what that's all about. Um, seed it on analog read on an unconnected pin. Okay, that makes sense. And then they just call random number to generate a random number, then they can use it. So let's go ahead and incorporate that in our test. Up here at the top, we will make that called the random seed. Random seed. And there's nothing connected to our zero analog pin. But I'm going to go ahead and just define the analog pin up here as a global variable. Okay. So now let's go ahead and make a call to get a random numbers. We'll just do it right here where we clear the buffer. And let's go ahead and get a a random number for the x-axis and a random number for the y-axis. So this will be int random x value random. And now remember our display is 120 pixels wide. So we'll use one for the min and 128 for the max. And our y value We will use uh, 1 through 64. Okay. And now when we draw a circle, instead of hard coding the values, we'll use random x value and random y value. Okay, if everything looks good, go ahead and save it and upload it. Oh, a mistake here, that should be Y. All right, go ahead and upload it. All right, if everything compiled and uploaded correctly, you should see the circle being drawn at random places on the screen. Now let's go ahead and bring this potentiometer into play here. We've already have, we already have it wired up and connected. What we need to do simply is to just read its value and then use it. So what we could do is instead of just look, um, using a hard code value for the delay, we'll get a value from the potentiometer and then use that to set the delay. That way you can speed up or slow down the, the drawing of the circle. So for that we are going to read from analog pin A1. I already have this hard 
um, declared up here. So for the potentiometer, let's go ahead and code this up. And we'll create a variable called int potentiometer value. And we're gonna read from the analog port or pin. Analog read. And then we'll reference that variable. Analog one the pin. And we'll use this potentiometer value in the delay. Let's go ahead and save this and upload it. Analog underscore pin. I got that wrong. Let me go ahead and make that change real quick. Okay, now you should see the circle being drawn on the screen. Now, depending on where your potentiometer is set, it'll either be fast or slow, relatively. So go ahead and just turn the potentiometer up and down to see that, to see the circle being drawn at different speeds. All right, so instead of drawing circles this time, Let's write some text to display and make it scroll. How do we do that? Well, let's go back. And if you look at the reference for UHG2, there's nothing to scroll text or graphics. But that's okay, because we can do this on our own. Let's go ahead and look at the draw string function here. So we can write some text to the display and simply scroll it by increasing the x-axis value. So that's what we'll do. Let's go back to the Arduino IDE. And let's create a global variable to keep track of where our scroll counter is at. So let's create a static variable. We'll just call it scroll counter. We'll set it to zero initially. And now we'll go ahead and use that code that I commented out earlier. And we'll just use hello world. If you want to put something else in there, go right ahead. It's got hello world. And then we're going to go ahead and increase the x and the x value based on the scroll counter. Let's go scroll counter. Now if we reach if we reach the end of the screen, which will be value 128, we need to reset it. So let's go ahead and we'll put a check in here in our loop if the scroll counter equals 128. Let's go ahead and reset it to zero. That way it'll just start over again. And of course we need to increment the scroll counter. That way it increases in value. Let's go ahead and save this and upload it. All right, we've got scrolling text, albeit slowly scrolling. And maybe this is slow for you as well, depending on when your potentiometer is set. Let's go ahead and speed it up just a little bit. There it goes, faster, faster, faster. All right, we've got scrolling text. Well, that wraps it up for this video. If you have any comments, please leave them below and stay tuned for more interesting and challenging videos. Thanks for watching.